On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, I might be full of hot wind. Or you could just be in the Southwest, because that's what happens there. I've been preparing for retirement. It's not fun. Welcome to the dawn, my friend. We're also going to talk about YouTube poop and all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you, YouTube. Is that a thing? Is that like a category? It absolutely is. It, just it should, Google YouTube poop. It should be a channel, right? <laughs> probably is. That's probably what you call this channel. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 213 for Thursday, the 16th of May, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and sometimes guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. I got it right. Fuck off. <laughs> yes! Man, it is Thursday night. It's uh, slightly after 7 p.m. Pacific yeah. when we go live every, almost every Thursday. Um, <laughs> good times, man. It's getting, it's, less, of the week. it's getting less and less common for us to be on time or even on the right day. <laughs> like we, we, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, what, what's going to happen if we ever hit that Patreon goal where we're supposed to go like four days a week or whatever? Oh, that's that's all. Is that also when we're supposed to quit our other jobs? No, no, that's the five days a week. Oh shit! Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we might want to have a meeting after this. <laughs> hey, dude, uh, uh, are, are are you being blasted by the uh, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona blow dryer in the face, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week kind of thing? Is that what the hot wind is about? I, I mean, not not twenty four seven. Today it was particularly bad, though. Uh, it was probably about eighty degrees outside. And uh, it was not quite what I would call windy, mm-hmm. but like one mile per hour shy of windy. Mm. It was just in that that cusp of of breezy to windy, and it was hot. Like there was no cooling factor to that breeze. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was like, just like you'd walk outside from the air conditioning and you just be like, oh, damn it. Yeah, it's I don't I don't miss that at all at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. we, we've had some wind up here. I just recently got a weather station. To, it's not the big, the, the really awesome one that has like, you know, the little weather vane that, um, will track the wind direction and shit oh, like that. So but, what you're saying is that you're old, just not super old. Yet. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm old. I'm just not, I'm, 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 I'm old and cheap. Cause this one was half the price of the <laughs> other one. So <laughs> <laughs> got it. All right. Miser check. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the, the highest winds we've gotten around here were 28 miles per hour last week. Okay. Uh, that's not too bad. Okay, cool. It seems like a lot more because it's like 40 degrees outside. Um, but we do get up to 60 mile an hour winds around here. So I can't wait to report back when that happens. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's, this is a windy state as well. Like New Mexico, at least, at least in the Valley where I'm at, it's, it gets windy as hell and 60 mile per hour winds are not unheard of. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know. We, we've talked about this, about this before. Wind is the worst thing. I don't care if it's a cold wind or, <laughs> uh, wind. yeah, anything over five, up to five, it's breezy. It's, it's yeah. good. That's, I mean, that's, I can, that's I can nice. go, I can go like eight. <laughs> yeah, but, but, what, up to 10, but once you, know? you, once you hit five, it, it starts going into the subjective realm. Like it can be shitty weather outside and be five miles an hour and you don't care. You're like, okay, it's a little slight breeze. But yeah, if, yeah. If it's a perfect day outside and you got a 10 mile an hour wind, okay, cool. But the shittier the weather, the lower that goes down to five. Right. And also, you know what? Past five miles per hour, that's when you have to worry about your paper plates blowing off the picnic table. Right. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah. Fuck, fuck wind. Um, yeah. It's retirement, huh? Like, um, <laughs> are you almost there? Speaking of blowing hot wind. Um, <laughs> here, oh, gonna... oh, you went to a military briefing, I, I guess. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip these because that one's got my social on it. <laughs> these are my checklists. These uh, uh, for for the audio listeners, there's probably sixty sheets of paper that are all different checklists that have got to be completed for me to process and have a retirement ceremony. And like, I just want something simple, man. I'm I'm not even doing it in blues, and it's still gonna be like a fifty step process that I'm uh, six months behind on. Like one of the items. It says three months prior. I'm like, mm. uh, how do you plan shit out three months ahead? That 
we don't even plan yeah. South by Southwest three months ahead, and that costs us thousands of dollars. Yeah, neither. I was going to say neither does Brian and Justin. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you say weeks or months? Uh, either way. Either way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's just it's it's been it's been overwhelming. Like I had an anxiety attack going through all this shit and just thinking, man, this is so much more than what I wanted. But th- there's the minimum requirements are more than what I want to do for this small ceremony I plan on having. And having to cut that down and find out which ones are actually like no shit Air Force required versus mm. which ones are like protocol required, you know, because I, I don't give a shit about protocol. Like, I don't, I don't, like, it's almost, it's supposed to be mandatory for you to have honor guard. I don't want honor guard. I don't want to inc- inc- inconvenience a bunch of airmen's to come in there and fold a flag and all that other crap. I just put a flag yeah, in the room because it needs to be there. But other than that, just call it a day, you know? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think honor guard is required it's not i mean there, there's flag protocols that need to be followed and honor guard will follow those but i mean if you know airman snuffy and sergeant snuffier <laughs> like knows the rules they can do it yeah yeah it's i, it, I don't even know i mean I don't, I don't need need all that like i'm flying someone in to be my official and that's about extra uh, the extra that i'm going you know yeah. um it's lucky enough that that my good friend and coworker Chuck, who was on this show about two, three years ago, something like that, yeah, uh, probably to talk about something Star Wars. Uh, I was lucky enough that that he volunteered to handle all of that shit for me and to, ran all the checklists and to everything. projo it for you, yeah, yeah. And uh, man, I whew, thank you, Chuck, so much because <laughs> damn, yeah, I did not want to mess with that shit. Yeah, and um. I mean, I I could have had somebody do that for me, but I, again, I don't want to, I'm trying not to bother anybody that doesn't need to be bothered. Mm. You know, I just, I don't have, I don't know. It's almost a, I don't want to say an imposter syndrome, but it's almost like this is something I'm doing not because I'm worthy of it, but because I want to do it for my family. Right. Yeah. That was the big thing for me. I wanted, I wanted my family to see and appreciate, you know, what, what the Air Force is. I, yeah. I already know, like I've been to like, yeah. you know, 200 retirement ceremony. Well, not that's an exaggeration, but probably yeah. upwards of 50 retirement ceremonies, you know, yeah. and I've been in the military for you know over two decades. I, I, it's not for me. Yeah. It was to show like my mom and, and like aunts and uncles and people that came into town and yeah, see none of them are coming. Um, but they're all in the middle of a move right now. Like they're moving to Arizona from LA to Arizona. So I'm not expecting them to mm-hmm. come. Um, but I, I did plan it. And once I figured this out, I was like, well, this has to be the date. Uh, my retirement ceremony is on the 7th of June. I'm going to try to live stream it right here on Twitch on diamondclub.tv. Uh, I don't know if it'll be a good angle, but I want to share it at least. And, um, Kent, I know you're not coming up. Uh, that's about, uh, what, two o'clock your time on a Friday afternoon. So maybe you'll be able to at least be in chat room, uh, if, if things go well. Um, but uh, not that you're not invited, by the way. It's just it's not reasonable <laughs> for you to fly up here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it, uh, I, I I figured out that my ceremony is actually on the 15th anniversary of the day I met my wife. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's exactly 15 years after we met. That's amazing. That's so. That once I once I realized that math had worked out, I was like, that has to be the day. And it's a Friday, so like it works out perfect. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, that's that's enough of that. I man, I I found. Okay, we'll talk about it later. I found a channel that reinvigorated my desire to play some City Skylines, and holy shit, I've been playing the hell out of it. I played Frostpunk a, a couple weeks ago. We were talking about Frostpunk, and it's this post-apocalyptic uh, winter has come over the entire planet, and it's a steampunk thing under frost so frostpunk the name i finally beat the opening scenario which was actually a lot harder than i thought it should be (laughs) and and uh finally beat that 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 game if you can find frostpunk on sale on steam pick it up if you're into city building uh especially apocalyptic stuff you know survival kind of thing it's really good oh my gosh it's good really in depth it's not overly in depth but it's like you can send scouts out to find other survivors, and you know mm. it's it's just really good. Uh, so Frostpunk is really good, and then City Skylines. I've been playing the hell out of it. I picked up a couple expansions because they're on sale last week, and 
oh man, like I I don't know what it is about building a city that I know I'm not good at, but I continue to try. Yeah. See, oh, I, I love that game. Like City Skylines is so much better, in my opinion, than than um SimCity. Mm-hmm. Uh there's just so much more. It's more in depth, it's more detailed. Uh I, I don't know. It just I like it better. Yeah. Um, and then you add Steam Workshop but, on there and the mods and shit like that people add in there and Yeah, but Holy god crap. damn it, if I suck at this game. <laughs> <laughs> like it's yes. i'm constantly getting yelled at by the citizens <laughs> you don't have enough power okay then yeah. i'll fucking all right I, i'll add some power well now you don't have enough citizens to pay the taxes to pay for the power <laughs> like, uh, all right okay i'll build more houses well now you don't have enough power to power those ha- it's like oh my god where's yeah. the balance <laughs> yeah and, and but but six hours later you're still trying to find the balance between those two <laughs> let alone the traffic and everything else and you're like why am i playing right. this game and then you yeah. sit down your computer the next day and you load it up again and you're like what the city skyline any city builder like that is the definition of ritual misery to me <laughs> like really- i i i can't put it down i love those games i've loved Sim yeah. city there, since it first came out there's no moment where you're just like, I did it. <laughs> like that doesn't happen. And I know there are people that are like that. I know that there are, there are people that are good at this. I found one. It's one of my one of my things for later. I know there are people, but it, it's not me. And for some reason, I can't not try again. And I right, don't know right. why. <laughs> oh man. Oh, so so geez. have you been playing City Skylines at all? I mean, I I know uh, you picked it up not too long ago when it was on sale and, and uh, got the yeah, message. it's. it's it it's been a bit since I played it, uh, because I I think the last time I played it, like the my, uh, all of my last time I logged in, like all of my um, uh, buildings and everything were flashing because they either didn't have water or power or or, or they had a dead person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, ambulance, ambulances can't reach this part of the city. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. And then they, and then they get there and they don't have anywhere to go because you've got forgot to build a crematorium for that side of town. And you're like right. son yes. of a bitch, man. Yeah, yeah. These are the most like I don't even know where my local crematorium is, but according <laughs> to this game, I got to have one every two blocks. <laughs> I don't want to move to your city. <laughs> that does not sound fun. Uh, and, oh, and Frostpunk, gosh. one of the things you can do is um, burn the bodies of the people that die. You can throw them in a snow and ice pack so they basically stay frozen. Then you can mm. like salvage parts for them from from them for later. Wow. Or but it, it, like you have to do something because it's got to bring people closure. But it'll but do you bring them closure by like leaving their bodies out in the snow or, you know, and it, it's, you have to make all these tough decisions. Okay. Well, children, do you want to give them a shelter or do you want to add them to your workforce? You know, like it's man, that's, that's, it's a different game. It's not a city builder per se. It's more of a survival city of survival kind of thing, but both these games, city skylines and Frostpunk, go try them out. Cause they're amazing. Nice. Um, what, what you should try out is Pokemon. The trading card game. No, I got I got two new cards this this past weekend. I got Detective Pikachu uh-huh. and Snubble in this in this p- free pack that I was handed at the movie theater when I saw Detective Pikachu the movie. <laughs> that, that, I mm-hmm. yeah, it's a movie. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so what was the driving force to watch this movie? Uh, because I'm a nerd and it's Pokemon, <laughs> and my, my both of my sons actually and my girlfriend, uh, like you know, grew up playing the, you know, starting with Game Boy all the way through to like the current incarnations of of the games. Now, in, so, in, in all fairness, po- in all fairness, your girlfriend is only like six months older than your son, so that uh, that's not accurate. <clears throat> Four months. It's no, not, I, was I was gonna say it's not inaccurate kidding. either. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's years. Come on. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to reveal how many, but it's years. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, and then for me, Pokemon, at least the card game, was something that I, I started doing with my boys when they were really young. And so I've always kind of peripherally been, you know, you know, I knew the names of the Pokemons and whatnot. And then Pokemon Go, when that came out a few years back, uh, that kind of, uh, solidified it for me that, you know, I, I kind of understand Pokemon and what it's all about, I guess. And, um, anyway, this movie just, yeah, we were all interested in it. Uh, some of us more than others. Um, uh, it was a really good looking movie. The CGI was great. Yeah. How, how was the story though? Like, 
Um, so how long were we in pre-show? About 20, 30 minutes? No, yeah. not even. No, not quite, no. We, we could have workshopped that script. <laughs> 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 From idea to <laughs> final draft, I think. Uh, it was not a deep story whatsoever. It wasn't a bad story. I'm not trying to like dog so, it. So was it but... kid friendly kind of story where it's just oh, it, yes. it wasn't really all that deep, but it was, it was you know shallow rewards for for the young minds, or was it just completely like spaghetti? No, no, no. I mean, it, it wasn't. It wasn't vapid. It was just. I mean, it, you know, it had a, a an act one, act two, act three. Uh, there were there were stakes, uh, but it, it was just I don't know. It wasn't real deep. And then the quote twist mm. at the end, like I I knew you know I'm usually the person that's surprised by twists at the end of the movies. Um, no, this one was like on its face, like probably se- uh, late first act or early second act. I already knew how it was going to end. Mm. Um, just, I don't know. It was it was a basic story, basic plot. I. No, but I, it was fine. It was it was well acted for what it was, and it looked great. Did I mention it looks great? <laughs> <laughs> I I do have a question for you. When you're watching movies, just your average movie, you're just you're just everyday movie. You know, you're just you're watching it or whatever. Like, well, I guess okay. it's not a good good example because like it's a book and you could have read it like I did. Sure. When you're watching a movie, at what point in the movie, percentage wise? Do you typically have the plot figured out? Uh, I mean, it varies by movie, right? So, like, I mean, some some movies I go in knowing what the the plot is going to be. I mean, are you talking about a movie that I know nothing about going into? An average movie. So, if you take take the the movies that you already know the plot to, like it, and you cut that out, and then you take the movies that you know nothing about at all, no, zero about, and cut those out. The ones that are remaining, that ninety percent window in the middle. Well, I, mean, I think I'm probably the average viewer. Where, like, by formula, uh, going into the second act, you should know the plot of the movie. Um, I would say that's typically where I know. Yeah. Okay, the movie's gonna go this direction on me. So I'm gonna use Happy Death Day. Have you seen that movie? I have not. Okay, Happy Death Day. There is a surprise twist at the end. Okay. The twist is presented within the first 12 minutes of the movie. Okay. That's when I figured it out. Okay. It, it, my family likes to talk during movies. <laughs> that which would drive me up a fucking wall. It does, but it, it, not just because they like to talk. Like, I don't, I don't like my sister in law talking during Game of Thrones. Uh, because I'm trying to pay attention to what the fuck is going on, and she's over there like asking 10 million questions and shit. But during mm-hmm. movies, if I figure out the plot ahead of time, I don't want to share that. I just want to watch the movie. I'm more interested in the execution than the twist. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, they will ask me 5,000 times what, like, how the movie is going to go. And I don't want to tell them because I'm still trying to enjoy the movie, even though <laughs> I figured it out. I typically figure movies out at well within... Within the first act of the movie, I can typically... I, I guess maybe I just watched too much Murder, She Wrote when I was little. You know? So I kind of got yeah. that, that second sense of where movies or where a plot's going to go. I could never figure out who the murderer was, but I bet you I can tell you who it's not. Mm. Yeah. And that's... Thanks, thanks, Grandma, for making me watch Murder, She Wrote. Yeah. <laughs> Look, these movies have value. Or these TV shows have value. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, and, and it just irritates me. Like, I... Because even Get Out, like the movie Get Out, 10 minutes into the movie, I knew what was going on. Not the exact details, but very. Yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah, that one. That, I mean, in the twist even is revealed early on. Like, it's not even really a twist. It's just like a reveal. Right. Yeah. Like the what's what's actually happening in this town. I, yeah. That one was not difficult to figure out, but no. the, the execution of it is what was kind of like the shock moment. Right. Right. Yeah. right. The, and and the, the character realization came well after the audience realization, except right. in the case of certain people like my wife, who <laughs> who realized it with the characters. <laughs> That's and, amazing. Did she have the same reaction? <laughs> well, as she, the character, I guess. She was, she was the only brown person in the theater. 
Of course, we're in really? we're, we're in Wasilla, Alaska. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, you're right. She's she's one of seven brown people, and five of north, them live in our house. Wall. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but it's, it's it was so it was awkward in that. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, I, I don't I don't know. Like I'm always picking it up well well ahead of my family, but my family is the the people that are always asking the questions instead of paying attention to the plot. So, yeah, I just figured I'd ask. Um, Wabbit Magic came in and is now hosting us, and we appreciate that. Haven't seen him in a oh. while. Thank you, Wabbit. Yeah, thanks, Wabbit. Love you, man. Hey, um, but yeah, we're talking a lot about movies. Um, let's see how we're doing over in the old draft. Uh, I would love to, but I forgot to pull that up, so we'll do that now and hope it plays. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of May 13th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay, brought to you by Atheism, a non-profit organization. Let's go to the scoreboard! Team Ritual Misery's hanging out in the lobby, still waiting for their first film. Team Drunk is Gaming is in fifth place with $21.9 million. Team Divide Squad gets $15 million from The Hustle, and fourth place with $30.6 million. Team Game Night is in third place with $132.4 million. Team Have a Drink maintains second place thanks to $63 million from Detective Pikachu, bringing their total to $688.7 million. And in first place, with $960.5 million, is it's Team Movie Party. Let your stream Team Movie Draft Minute. Thanks to Stephen Cogswell for tonight's music. All totals are accurate as of May 15th, 2019. I want to say once again, congrats, Movie Party. <laughs> um, I, I'm wow. going to go a totally different direction. How amazing is it that we have Stephen Cogswell and Big Voice J doing the production of our movie draft minute it's pretty sick dude that is a uh, that is a talent pool of epic proportions it's, it's fucking ridiculous that is that's... yeah and uh jay jay's in the chat by the way he hi is. jay hey jay um, um the, the other thing i want to say is uh, uh we're still at what we're at zero dude hey uh but look. guess what guess what other teams Shit's about to change. Oh. RMP is about to step onto the scene Uh-oh. this weekend. Look out, because a dog's journey is this weekend. Oh, we're, yeah. we're getting on the board, dude. Oh, yeah. We, we are totally going to get like $30. <sighs> yeah, but then we've also got Aladdin and Godzilla coming out right on the heels of that. And um, those things are going to make us some some loot. Dude. Aladdin, we, Aladdin yeah. is. Uh, I I have to admit that I'm ex- actually excited to see Aladdin. We, we so there, there's this bell curve for the Disney movies this year. Have you noticed? Like everybody's, I uh, don't know, don't know, don't know. Then a, a trailer comes out, and like a few people get excited, but most people are like, Ooh. <laughs> And then, right, right. and then once you get past the teaser stage, and you actually start seeing real trailers. You're like, okay, all right, all right. And then you can start getting the stars hopping on the scenes, you know, on the the comedy shows and stuff like that, the late night shows, and they start mm. showing little clips here and there. Like, okay, all right, we're in. Yep, yep, this is looking good. That's how I'm. That's where I am with uh, uh, with Aladdin. Um, looks awesome. Like I thought, I thought Will Smith as the genie was going to be awful, and then I saw some things, and it was. I, I'm I'm pretty pretty psyched about it. I really yep. like the fact that Will Smith. Came on, um, uh, uh, I don't know, the Colbert Show or some shit, and was talking about how he specifically went into it with um, with uh, Robin Williams in mind, so as not to remove the legacy of Robin Williams, but to be true to it in a form that isn't de- like it doesn't take away from it. Like he went into right. it with he that was, in mind. He was channeling his energy, but not ripping off his jokes, kind of. Right. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. So that's cool, man. Yeah, I think I think Aladdin is going to be good, but I I also don't want to sell Godzilla short, man. Uh, I don't. I, any of my fellow kaiju fans out there, obviously we're going to see it, but anybody else that doesn't really care about these movies, just dude, watch watch the trailers and tell me that you don't get goosebumps. Like, but you got to give it a real chance. Like, not not people talking in the room while you watch it. <laughs> just sit quietly in a dark room and watch this thing. And that's tell what, me that you don't get goosebumps. That's what we tell everybody about this show, but nobody ever does it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd be a little concerned people are getting goosebumps <laughs> watching this show. I'm, really, oh, I'm a little gosh. concerned when people watch this show at all, but let alone alone in the dark with nobody talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure no one's talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I, it's gonna be interesting the next few weeks. Uh, we're actually gonna be on the board. We're gonna be in the game. So um, okay. I'm pretty sure we're going to uh, beat out game night. I think that's guaranteed. Mm. I'm not willing to say anything is guaranteed at this point. I need to see how a dog's journey is gonna gonna go first. Yeah, you know what else isn't guaranteed? Me getting if... any of these fucking questions right. Nope, nope. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Not yet, not yet. We got one more, one more quick little segment here before we go into the game. What? Uh, but the game. I... Everybody comes for the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So, so come, come for the game. Stay for the. Or no, wait. That's be backwards. Um... <laughs> <laughs> damn it so my segue is is ruined uh, i was gonna say you know what else isn't guaranteed whether next week's game of thrones episode is going to be reviled by fans oh no i think it's pretty much guaranteed yeah probably based on the reaction from episode five um There's no pleasing fans. It's going to be... Well, I don't know. See, Endgame is in direct uh, opposition to that opinion. But but also, Endgame went the way everyone expected and wanted it to go. Right. And uh, this went the way that I expected it to go, which means everybody else was fucked. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. You can't please everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm interested to see where the story goes with this final episode. But we've got a Deadpool going. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I both earned a lot of points this week. Mm. So if you, if you, uh, for whatever reason, uh, are worried about Game of Thrones spoilers, uh, go ahead and fast forward about ten minutes uh, because we're gonna we're gonna talk about who died in episode <laughs> five of season of season eight of Game of Thrones. Yep. Um, all right, man. Uh, lots of high profile deaths. Let's just go down the list here. Uh, Cersei Lannister. And what we might as well say, because they're both right there next to each other, uh, both on the show yeah. during their deaths and on the list, Jamie and Cersei died. And both I are. called them. I got a point each for those. Same here. Although uh, I will say they did not die how they how I expected them to die. I expected Jamie to kill Cersei. I expected Jamie to kill Cersei in the mountain to kill Jamie. That's a yep, hundred percent. And, and then the hound to kill the mountain. I thought yes. was, I thought that domino effect was almost guaranteed, and about half of it was. Right. Yes. Um, well, ish, ish. Um, all right. So then, the, let's see. The next in our list that died. So speaking of the hound and the mountain, uh, both of them perished. Uh, together. Together again. We got we got a couple, a death couple again. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I called those as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yep. So then, um, let's see. Oh, I didn't think that Varys was going to die. I did. Yeah. So you got the point. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> uh, I knew that, he was done just from what uh, what Melisandre said. Yep. I, see. <clears throat> Just because you're going to die on this continent doesn't mean you're going to die before the show ends. Right, but why mention it then? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're not wrong. <laughs> you're not. I'm just, that's not... Uh, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Who else? Was that it? Was that all the deaths? Um, five? Five you, from the list? Nope, you're on. Oh, that's right. Yes, and I called that one as well. Yep, same yeah. here. So... So I basically so, caught up to you this time. I got eight in total, and you've got eight total going into the last episode. Um, I think I've got a lot of the others wrong. Yeah, like who? Who in particular? Okay, Name, so uh, I picked John. A couple. I picked John to die. I think he's going to live. I think he's going to go to the wall. Um. The wall. Yeah. First of all, why? 
Why would anyone go to the wall? And then, and why would John in particular go to the wall? I think he's going to go to the wall as a starting point for going north and and colonizing the rest of the Northlands. Oh, so he's oh, so he's going to join Tormund and Ghost in the in the true north. Right. Okay, so the, it's not the wall. Like the wall doesn't matter really. Not necessarily, no. But I think that's going to be the scene that they show. I don't think they're going to go to like. Uh, the fist or something like that. It's going to be the wall is going to be where okay. John's story on the show ends. Okay. All right. Um, I let's see here. Tyrion. I think Tyrion dies. I think Danny dies, and I got both of those wrong. Mm, well, maybe got them wrong. Well, we don't. Uh, um, these are all presumptions at this point. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm disagreeing with you on John. I think John is going to die. Hmm. Um, well, see, this last episode makes it seem like he's going to live. I was certain that he's going to die, forever, and then now. Mm, now watch it, because I was certain uh, Arya was going to kill the Night King forever until one episode right. has t- switched my mind and it fucked me. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I mean, it's too late for us to change our answers on the sheet. Like we're we're locked in. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So I, I'm I'm calling. I'm still calling for John's death. I, I'm not, I'm not as certain as I was, but I'm still calling for it. Uh, let's see. Let me let me see if there's real quick run through here. I'm, I'm calling Tyrion to live. Hmm. Uh, I will be disappointed if he dies, but if he does die, it's probably because uh, Daenerys finds out that he released Jaime. Uh, yep. Because she did say like a couple episodes ago. The next like, time you betray me will be, or the, the next time you. It's not Basically, be- the next time you fuck up is your last that's your time. Ass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. I've got Sam and Gilly and Little Sam living. Let's see, I, oh, I said that Brienne's gonna die. That's probably not gonna happen. She's almost certainly gonna live. Yeah. Um, I also I, called I, I for Davos Bron to die. I have Bron dying, but I don't think that's gonna happen now either. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and Davos, no, I think he's going to live, but I, was, I already had him living. And I showed Grey Worm dying. I think he's going to die as well. In fact, I I wouldn't be surprised if John kills Grey Worm for war crimes. Because mm. he kind of started that riot in the streets. Like, it was a direct response to Daenerys' actions, but... I, I don't even think it was a direct response to her actions. I think it was on her orders. And that, well, maybe. But it's also, like, that was... Obviously, but I also the, I also think John well, is going to kill Danny. So maybe I think that's going to happen. I I just I think I think Arya is going to do it. Yeah, I the, the the way because the way okay, <sighs> she was walking out of that city and and shit's hitting the fan, and she's trying to save who she can save. And there's this little girl that she was trying to save her and her mother in particular. And the mom falls down, the girl goes to the mom, and then the dragon comes through and, and burns the shit out of them, and they die. And Arya sees them, and she's mourning them after the like the calamity settles down a little bit. She's kind of mourning them. You can see their burnt-ass fucking corpses, uh, like uh, uh, Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen style. And the little girl was clutching this toy horse. Mm-hmm. And then Arya like, looks up, and there's a real horse, a real white horse, that comes and and she rides him out of the city. I think she's riding to wherever the fuck Daenerys is to mm. get revenge for this little girl. Because I think that's the horse's purpose. <laughs> and uh, hey, I need a weapon to to kill who did this. Oh, there's one. Her name's Arya. <laughs> that's what I think is gonna happen. I I think Arya will talk to John. And have a coming to Jesus with him about Danny. And that will lead to John killing Danny. I think but, John had his own come to Jesus during the battle. Like Right, like, right. But I I yeah. but I think it'll take more than that for him to take that final stroke. And I think Arya will be the pivotal um opinion, the pivotal words that, that lead him down that path. But um and maybe he would do it on his own, but I think I think she will she'll give him the extra you know, who are you? And, you know, she'll give him that little pep talk, the the challenging pep talk, because he's the only one that can get really get close enough to her, if he can. 
this could all blow completely up in my face when he walks up into the castle and she just burns his ass alive for, you know, being a threat to her claim. But whatever. Yeah. So, the, so the <laughs> the real question is, does Drogo die? I'm gonna say no. Okay. I'm gonna say no only because it leaves so much available for future stories in this land. Yeah, I don't think we're if, gonna get any future stories. But well, uh, it, not 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 like from HBO, but for like books and alternate material and things like that. Like if you kill the last dragon, you have to reintroduce dragons if you're gonna bring them back. Whereas if Drogon flies away, then yeah. Well, so here here's here's my thing on that. So I I don't think HBO is gonna go in the future with. Mm-hmm you know, Westeros or whatever. It'll be all in the I also don't think, I also don't think George R. R. Martin is going to, I think once the saga of the, you know, the song of ice and fire is told, he's going to have some other adventures in the land and whatnot and tell about, you know, more Duncan egg stories and more like history type stuff, maybe. Um, but it, he's got about 12 minutes to live <laughs> and he's got other things that he wants to write. He's not writing anything in the future. Mm-hmm. I think this is, this is it. So if there's going to be an apocalyptic, thing like an asteroid just hits the fucking planet that they're on and it's just none of it mattered anyway like well that could totally happen because it doesn't matter mm. that's my opinion. Okay. and also george r. r martin is not like other authors he he is not allowing his works to be part of his legacy like his uh like no one gets to inherit his uh worlds and things like that once he dies like no one else gets to write until well 70 years after his death (laughs) then they can write all they want yeah we'll see um okay so uh, anything else be on the uh, any any nope ideas that's all that's all i have to say about game of thrones (laughs) until next week (laughs) yeah yeah um but if if um yeah, I I don't know. Uh, you you guys like our conversations? Do you want to help us have more conversations? Uh, head over to <laughs> head over to Patreon dot com slash Ritual Misery. Patreon pop Uh yeah. Patreon dot com slash Ritual Misery. Throw us a few bucks. Show us that you give a fuck and let things work themselves out. And uh, we appreciate all that you do because we would like to go to South by next year and we're saving this money up to do that. So. Yes, um, absolutely. And, that shit's um, expensive. Yeah. So this this week, or uh, I'm sorry, next week on uh, the jury show, Justin's brother and sister in law are going to be filling in for him and and doing their own show during that slot. Actually, I don't know if they're going to be on Twitch or if it's just going to be in the podcast feed. Hmm. Um, but it's going to be Italy. Yeah, because it, so it's going to be interesting to to hear from Justin's family. Uh, what they think about Justin, and if you if you guys want to know what Justin's mom thinks about Justin, you need to become a patron because you will get the exclusive RMP interview with Gloria Young. Patreon dot com slash Ritual Misery. By the way, this episode is brought to us by Booty Hole. Booty Hole. Who, who's who's Booty Hole? Uh, don't tell anybody. I think it's BK. Uh, oh. But anyway, so our patron Booty Hole hmm. uh, is uh, is who we're thinking tonight. So thank you very much, Booty Hole. Uh, booty Hole, you make it all happen. This show is dedicated to Booty Hole. <laughs> it's all about the Booty Hole tonight. We love Booty Hole. By the way, did you hear that you can't get an infection in your Booty Hole? I've heard that, but I don't know if Booty Hole's necessarily sterile. <laughs> But you can't get an infection in your booty hole, right? Because it's your booty hole, right? No, that and, and that makes complete sense. But it's a matter of, I'm I'm not I'm not challenging the infectivity of the booty hole. I'm challenging the sterility of the booty hole. <laughs> I mean, I think the things that come out of the booty hole are sterile as they come out, right? I don't think so. No, probably not. No. <laughs> not. But at least it's not infected already. Yeah, but it may be infectious. <laughs> so thank you, Booty Hole, Hole, for making this show possible. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> speaking of poop. Can uh, have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very... 
Excited. Kids games. Play with them. It should be mandatory. Mand- mand- mandatory. It should be <laughs> mandatory that I drink during the show because I'm having far more fun than I usually do. <laughs> on my uh, yes. now on my second beer. <laughs> Make that a rule. All right. So this week's game is called YouTube Poop or uh, what, YouTube Pop. Webbit Magic in the chat room said uh, you can't get an infection in your booty hole, and I would challenge that um, you can't get an infection in your RMP hole. But that's just my opinion. I'm not a doctor. I just play one on this podcast. All right. Well, Doctor Amos, you have to tell us if <laughs> if, if these Doctor Amos sounds just like Patron Booty Hole. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's made up. It's fake. All right. So I'm going to name a YouTube channel, and you're going to tell me mm-hmm. if it has more than 40 million subscribers or less than 40 million subscribers. Oh. So if it has more than, you're going to call it YouTube Pop. Okay. Or just Pop. And if it has less than 40 million, then it's YouTube Poop. Only the top channels have more than 40 million subscribers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. No, I I, I understand the rules. I don't... don't. All right. So here we go. Uh, We're going to start out real simple, I Mm -hmm. think. All right, so your first one is PewDiePie. More. He's pop for no fucking reason. Yeah, so he actually ranks number two with 95 million subscribers. And is that number down from his highest point? Because I fucking hope so. I'm not sure. But our, your second YouTube channel is Smosh. Smosh. Spell it. S-M-O-S-H. Smosh. Smosh. I'm going to go with less than. I'm going to say that's a poop. It is. Uh, that show actually ranks number 49 with 24 million. Only 24 million. Okay, yeah. Only, only 24 million. Only yeah. Only yeah. 24 million. All right. Uh, next one is Ariana Grande. Uh, that's pop. Wait, is that, is, is that her? Is that her official channel? It is her official channel, and uh, it only ranks number 16 with 35 million subscribers. Oh. So according to the rules of this game, it is YouTube poop. Wow. All right, your next YouTube channel is WWE. Um, ooh, that's a tricky one, too, because they have their own service, their own streaming service. So how much content are they actually putting out on the YouTubes? Oh, I like where your head's at on this, you fucker. Um, I'm going to go more. I'm going to say this pop. You think WWE is pop? Sure. Uh, So do the 43 million subscribers that put them uh, at rank number eight. All right. um, Your next one is Ed Sheeran. He was uh, of Uh, Game of Thrones fame. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, more like Britney Cherry fame, but whatever. So the first time I ever heard of this person was because the internet freaked the motherfuck out because he was on Game of Thrones. No, I had no idea who the guy was until no. like the next day when I got on Twitter. No, yeah, you're wrong. So all right, so Ed the, Sheeran. The first time you hear you heard of Ed Sheeran is when I went crazy about a video that had him and Britney Cherry dancing in a ballroom. And I thought it was fucking amazing. And I talked to you about it. And and you thought it was nothing worth remembering. And then you right. saw him on, on Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I did not make the connection until you later told me that it was the same person. Right. And <laughs> you still didn't make the connection until I just reminded you that it was the same person. Correct. So, so of Game of Thrones fame. So, Ed so Sheer- we will call that a well actually well played. <laughs> <laughs> is this channel YouTube poop or YouTube pop? I'm going to say it's YouTube pop because he's he's pretty popular and he's got a lot of British people. <laughs> what, in his basement? <laughs> Where does he have these British people? Well, I was going to say British people that uh, that, that really dig him, but I didn't finish because I was waiting for the sounder. His channel only ranks number 12 with oh. 38 million. 30, 30 what? 38? 38 million subscribers. He's just below the line. Uh, All, All right. right. So your next YouTube channel is Ritual Misery. Oh, that's poop. <laughs> I could have told you that. With 47 subscribers. 47. It, yes, I noticed that earlier today. Rank. 
It's just rank. Yeah, it's just rank. It didn't even rank anywhere. It's just rank. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, if you're watching this and you want to bump us over that 50 subscriber limit so we can actually get our own URL, by all means. We've only been doing this for like four years and nobody watches this on YouTube. But the people that do watch us, like the five people that watch us, watch us only on YouTube. Yes. So, so seriously, go find us, Ritual Misery, on YouTube. It's yeah. not ritualmisery.com. Sla- I mean, uh, uh, youtube.com slash ritual misery because we're not at 50 yet. So help yeah. us get there. <laughs> Three more. <laughs> Three more. Yeah, uh, and I think it's fifty. It might be a hundred, but either way, go go make that either happen. Way free. Either way, it's free. Just make it happen. Yeah. Um, all right. So your next one is five minute crafts. Uh, that sounds like something that would be really popular. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say that's pop. To me, that was the, the number one surprise in this list. Yeah. Was that that's like one of the top uh, several. Uh, channels on YouTube See, and but but watching it like it makes uh, it's like okay of course because this is shared easy, heavily yeah easily digestible it, easily shareable and it's something that it, 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 it appeals to the common person so yeah um I think it's I think its biggest audience is from Facebook shares yeah uh, YouTube dot com slash channel slash capital U capital C capital P lowercase Z capital H capital A uh, uh, one Lowercase y, lowercase a, capital J, lowercase z, lowercase y, lowercase t, capital J, capital T, lowercase p. I don't know if that's a zero or an O, but it's capital. And then uh, capital A, lowercase h, lowercase b, five, lowercase i, lowercase y. And that same character, O or zero, again. This is why we need you to subscribe to Ritual Misery on YouTube. <laughs> yes, guys, make that happen. Thank you. And, um, uh, Thank you, Bad Weave. And W. Scott One. Well, w. Scott One says it was a Q. So, fuck. Like, I can't yeah. even. And uh, uh, we, yeah, uh, NATO phonetic alphabet. Yeah, no, we're not going through that again. Uh, actually, what we're about to do is. Uniform do Charlie, what? Papa, Zulu, Hotel, Alpha, One, Yankee, Alpha, Juliet, Zulu, Yankee, Tango, Juliet, Tango, Papa, Quebec, Alpha, Hotel, Bravo, Five, India, Yankee, Quebec. Okay, I was going to say we're not going to sit through that again. but uh, <laughs> Anyway, moving on to question number eight. The YouTube channel Toy Pudding TV. Toy no. TV. No, that's, that's poop. <laughs> Even if it's got 80 million subscribers, it's poop. Uh, it ranks number 50 with 24 million subscribers. 50 with 24 million. Got it. That's still a lot. All right. Uh, T-Series. T series. That sounds like a T show that talks about T. I'm going to say it's poop because I don't like T. Unless it's <laughs> sweet tea from Olive Garden. <laughs> With 8 million subscribers, this is actually the number one channel on all of YouTube. What the hell is it about? Uh, I don't know, but it's an Indian channel and it was making all of the, like, like, uh, of best course. Support- uh, Twitter, uh, whatever, all the rounds of like, oh my God, there's this Indian channel that's going to take over uh, PewDiePie's position. Uh, and then um, I stopped hearing about it right about the time that apparently it happened. So like a few months back, I guess, it became the number one channel. Oh, so two things. One, you should never be proud of getting higher than PewDiePie currently is because he should be at fucking zero. Two... Uh, according to W. Scott, it's one. We are now at 50 subscribers on YouTube. Yay! Thank you, chat realm. <laughs> Amazing. That is fucking awesome. This is why we do this show. Yes. Yes. To get subscribers from more people can see the show. That's why we do the show. Wait, that doesn't. What's your next question, dude? <laughs> it's a Dutch door, man. <laughs> um, all right. Your final or, question. Or, or a Dutch rudder. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> it can be both. Right? All right. Uh, your final one is Justin Bieber. Uh, I'm going to say that's uh, poop. You say that Justin Bieber is If there's poop. any faith in him, see, that's, this is why. <sighs> Justin Bieber comes at rank number seven with 44 million. And that's actually where the line is drawn. The eighth ranked channel has less than 40 million. That's, I'll drink to that. Uh, you still got a passing score. You got six out of ten. That is a D minus. 
That was pure but luck. But these get degrees, right? These get degrees. I mean, liberal arts degrees, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> still a degree. Still more still of a degree, degree than I have. <laughs> right, right. All right, man. Um, let's get into the main event. Uh, we wanted to look at some YouTube stuff this week. and uh, I mean, we look at YouTube stuff. Pretty much, pretty regularly, yeah. I think. But we're going to talk about some things that we found recently. Yeah, and I'm going to start this off with a non-YouTube find because this is something that I found. Uh, it was the third most watched channel. I was hoping Roger Chang troubleshoot some DTNS stuff on um, on Twitch over the weekend, and I've and this was the third watched channel at the time. So I'm going to go ahead and bust this out because it's the only non-YouTube on the list, I believe. But okay, um, Twitch.tv slash Bob Ross. Yes, it's I've a, been. It's, it's a verified I'm, account, and they're replaying old Bob Ross videos, and it's fucking amazing. Where have you been, dude? I've been, I've been not subscribed. What's the word? Uh, I've a follower of that yeah. channel for like almost since I've been on Twitch. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> oh my god, it really like, is. It, all this week, I've been going through like all kinds of stressful shit with the retirement and with uh, the internship and just just life in general. You know, uh, I'm not too proud to say marital problems and you know all that other stuff like everything's kind of hitting me this last couple weeks um and honestly i can throw some fucking bob ross on and holy shit is just relaxing it's like a fucking yeah. zen channel dude it's so you, cool you gotta beat the devil out of that brush that's like he was literally making happy little trees when i fucking watched it yes. dude Oh man, yeah. He, he was uh, he was all like like oh it's a shame to make those mountains so pretty and to cover it up with trees, but I guess we'll just make a whole forest because well happy little trees are the way to go. I was like, fuck yes, yeah. man. So good. Twitch.tv uh -oh. slash Bob Ross. Oh my god, yeah, it's so good. Bob. Um, all right. So what, my, what my you know first... what we need? We need a movie that that dedicated not just to uh uh, uh what what the fuck was Fred's name. Uh, Rogers, Fred Rogers, Bob Ross, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, Fred yeah. Rogers, Bob Bob Ross. You know. Um, yeah. Like, um, speaking of speaking of Mr. Rogers on uh, HBO, they have the uh, documentary mm. about Mr. Rogers. Um, I can't even remember what it's called now. Something like "Won't You Be My Neighbor?" Mm -hmm. I think. Right. Uh, have you watched that? I have not because I didn't know it was live yet. Oh, you got to be in. It's so good. And here's a funny thing. Uh, I hated watching Mr. Rogers when I was little. But as I grew up, I was like, oh, my God, this is like the most wholesome fucking show ever. Which yeah. is probably oh, why yeah. I didn't you'll, like it. You'll have, a, you'll have a brand new appreciation of the man himself after watching it. It's just oh, it's yeah. so good. And, and that's probably why I appreciate it more now is because I know more about him and less about the show. You know, I know about him appearing before the Senate and things like that and going out there and finding money for PBS. And yeah, he's, he was just an amazing person overall. He's um, a one of a kind dude. Like, I don't think people like that exist. I yeah. mean, other than him. Right. And he doesn't even, he's not even in this world anymore. Yeah. Well, magic said he saw it and it was pretty good. Yeah. It's yeah. I, it's pretty great. It, as cynical as I am, I can't not celebrate the good people, the genuinely good fucking people, you know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe because right, so, I'm as cynical as I am. <laughs> so my, yeah. So my my first video that I I put in the list here is um, a lot of you have probably seen this because this thing went viral. It's a uh, Star Wars scene thirty eight reimagined. Uh, this is the uh, in the first Star Wars movie the climactic uh, lightsaber duel between Darth Vader and Obi Wan Kenobi on the Death Star. Mm. Somebody went through and re edited that scene and made it. Um, uh, That's much more exciting. It's a space station. It's too big to be a space station. Very bad feeling about oh, it. Um, I'm just playing it in the background so you can keep talking about it. What is it about this that, that got you going? Oh, because it's got like flames and shit all over it. Yeah, I hadn't seen this. Yeah, so uh, really good. Like I, I recommend this to to anybody. Just look it up. It's uh, F X I T I N post. Fix, uh, so if, like fix fix it in post is mm -hmm. basically what it what it the channel is. Um, but yeah, just look up Star Wars scene thirty eight. Actually, in fact, on YouTube right now, you can probably just type like Star Wars 
S C and then it'll autofill because it's that popular right now. Um, yeah, super exciting. Very well done. It's amazing what people can do. Just amateurs just that have a few afternoons to dick around with there, after effects or, or whatever. There it is are entire doing. like sections of the scene that are fabricated. <clears throat> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's the, well, yeah. There is some of that, but it's the the crux of of the the scene is is kept. It's just re-edited, and I don't know. Just for yourself, go go check it out. Uh, what's your what's your next video, Amos? That's I'm I'm ashamed that I haven't seen this yet. I gotta watch this now. This is like the one video that I didn't watch on here because I figured you'd have so much to say about it that I'd rather hear your opinion first. I ah. fucked up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. Um, I the the whole the whole reason for us of doing this, I had to step out of my office while my daughter was in here. She likes to come in here and just hang out, and mm. um, and, and, you know, just chill out with me as I'm editing audio or doing a podcast or whatever. And mm. uh, she brings her iPad in here. She'll sit there and play Minecraft while I'm playing City Skylines and stuff. It's like you know, father daughter bonding time. Mm. Um, I had to pee. And I was in the middle of a project, and I didn't want her to touch anything, and I didn't want to close my project down, but she wanted to play on the computer. So I gave her something to do on the computer. I just brought up slow-mo guys, because they're awesome. Um, have you heard of them? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, I've been watching them for quite a while. Um, brought them up and just played a video, whatever their top, you know, whatever video popped up. And it was this one with Champagne Saber in 4K slow motion with Rhett and Link from, uh, damn, I don't remember what show they do. They're, it's a pretty decent show, too. Um yep. And I was laughing my ass off on this video. Did you watch this? I did. Oh. Yes. Like, it starts out really serious, but about halfway through, one of the guys can't pop the cork. <laughs> and I... Good Mythical Morning. Exactly. Thank you, uh, W. Scottis one and Bad Weave. Um, I, I lost my shit. Like, I had to go and pee again because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> it was hilarious. This video, and of course, links will be in the show notes, but... Um, they, they try to do the little saber smash against the champagne bottle just to take the top of it off. And it goes hilariously wrong several times until, until it goes amazingly right. Yeah, um, right. I don't remember which guy it was, but, but where he got nothing but the cork and yeah. that was fuck epic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, it's a good video. It's fun to watch slow-mo guys. Cause they, a lot of time, a lot of their videos are, are kind of, blah like it's you know it, it's cool it's slow no. motion but it's not it's not like it's not gonna make me want to watch again yeah I mean, yeah it's i mean it's one of those things like unless you're like really in love with the personality of these guys like it, for the most part and i hate to say this because it's such a quality channel but if you've seen two or three of their videos you kind of seen all of them yeah with a few except like you know this one has Rhett and link in it yeah. right they're the Rhett and link usually aren't in um but for the most part i mean the, their videos are pretty much the same however the slow motion capture that they do is absolutely freaking incredible yeah they're masters of that craft and it, it, it just overall like if i want to see if i want to know what it looks like when paint blows up out of a out of a paintball gun i'm going to look them up and they're going to show me and it's going to be amazing um yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's God, I just I laughed so hard, and it, and I thought, man, what are the what are the other cool things we see on YouTube this week? And that was the catalyst for uh, the topic this week. Yeah, um, so my my next video is called the algorithm. From Not funny Matt, at all. From Matt, yeah, from Matthew Colville. Uh, so Matt, you, some of you might might follow Matt. Um, uh, he's um, uh, I a do total now. Bird. Yeah, he's a total nerd. He used to he used to work for a gaming company, and I uh, he he's mostly like a D and D guy now. And he talks about like you know how to run certain campaigns or or how to create a certain type of character. He's he's written books about campaigns and DMing and stuff like that. Uh, all around entertaining, nerdy guy like he he's got one of those like voices and and like a rhythm to his speech that like once you start watching him it doesn't matter if like if you're like you know what i've got three minutes i'll just click on a video and the and the video is an hour and a half long you'll watch the entire thing yeah yeah <laughs> uh but anyway so that's matt but but this video in particular the algorithm he's talking about like basically like science fiction concepts of like the 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 computers taking over the world and 
how it's our, like those those uh, uh, technologies and algorithms already like already exist and have for many many years. Yeah. And um, I, Amos, what what was your take on this? You watched this one, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it on the creative side, and I'm also gonna take it on the subject side. The creative okay. side, he does course edits. He does he he basically crops video, takes a good take, slaps it together. There's it's not it's not smash cuts like the the vlog brothers do. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah, very point. coarse. It, there's no attempt to make it look smooth. It's just here it is, here it is, here it is, and he does it exceptionally well. And he it, mm-hmm. there's a flow to it in. Um, I, I, and I can appreciate as, as a person who's doing podcasting, uh, editing for a living soon, um, I can appreciate just doing a course cut and not fucking worry about the, the little shit in, the, in between. Mm-hmm. The content itself, though, the subject matter, it's not that I learned anything, but he presented it in a way that was still interesting to me. And combined the subject matter, because what he basically is saying is we're not teaching AI to fuck with us. We're letting AI teach itself to fuck with us. Which is yeah. even worse, even more dangerous. It's more impressive, yeah. but it's far more fucking dangerous. Yeah, we we have set Skynet loose. Yeah, we are we are so far so so much closer to the fucking singularity than we ever wanted to imagine. Yeah, yeah. So if if any of that interests you guys, like check it out. Matthew Colville is his channel name. Just check him out. Like any video, any yeah. video. It's it's great. But you know, like I said, he does a lot of D and D stuff, but. Every now and then he puts out a video like this where he just talks about something that's you know catches his interest and it's uh it's good stuff. What's your next video, Amos? Um, I'm gonna go with Biffa Plays Indie Games. And this is a channel. And I, 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 I came up with this guy because he's an English dude, so he's already funny. And he's <laughs> Okay. A lot of the, a lot of his channel, he he talks about other games and stuff like that. But most of the channel that I watch anyway is he takes uh, cities, skylines, games, game saves from people, and fixes their traffic issues. What? So, so his whole video is fixing other people's fucking traffic, and he does it. It's so inter- like. He'll sit there and watch it and be like, oh, my God, it's at 4% traffic utilization. This is the worst I've ever seen. And then the next video is 3%, you know, and it's like, oh, my God, how do you how do people can't get anywhere? And he's he's ragging on the city at the same time he's fixing it. And he's he's a, a traffic genius. I mean, he's only doing common sense stuff that anybody should be able to do. But, of course, we we don't because, as previous stated, we both suck at city builders. Um, <laughs> right. But... This oh is, my god! Yeah, this, it's it's so fun to watch him, and a lot, a lot of his videos are long. But I can just sit down and watch him while while I'm eating cereal or something like that, and it just it makes the time go by. It's entertaining. I feel like I'm learning something, although there's no fucking way I'll ever put it to use because I suck at city builders. Um, yeah. yeah, he even says on his channel that he's like, if if you are having traffic problems in in cities, like send him your thing and he'll fix it for you. Yeah. Yeah, and he'll record it and make fun of you the entire time. Um, and he it's, doesn't it's, he doesn't like rag on you. It's it's just like how did why did you come up with this? <laughs> it's like you're not I, us, you're not using any buses at all. Why aren't you using your buses? Oh, there's subways, but you don't have any subway cars. You just have the lines. Like, <laughs> I need uh, to hit this guy up. I need to hit this guy. <laughs> yeah, I need to find a guy like or a person like this that does water and electricity and. Uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> pollution, yes. trash, police coverage. I need I need, oh. I need <laughs> pollution. I basically need need to sublet all of my city skyline cities out to other people so they can figure this shit out cuz I can't, obviously. I am the worst yeah. mayor ever. Yep. Well, it's, dude, it's like in basic training when um you would pay one guy to fold your socks, you paid another guy to shine your boots. Yeah, and he's like usually the best guy. Yeah, yeah, he's usually a bartering system. You know? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I was pretty good at folding underwear. So give yeah. me your underwear. I'll give you my boots. Yeah, you'll make my boots shine. I can shave by my boots. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah that's... Good. All right, so that's that's Biffa plays. Um, so guys, yeah, check that out. That sounds freaking awesome. It's... I did not watch any of his videos yet. But it's so man. fun. <laughs> All right, so for my final video, this one is is just called Movie Credits Explained, and uh, the channel name is Austin McConnell. This was. Uh... <sighs> this is a, it's a little bit of a longer video. It's about eight and a half minutes long. If and I knew, 
because between this and um uh film iq film iq is good oh my god yes but you if i'd known all that if i knew their actual jobs that did these things in hollywood like it seems so obvious but it's not if i'd known i'd be working in hollywood because all this shit sounds so fucking interesting to me yeah so this guy austin basically he for, for she spends about eight minutes breaking down exactly what all the jobs are in movie credits. So like, I mean, Marvel has gotten most people accustomed to sitting through credits, even if you're not looking at the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you, you, you glance at it once in a while, even if you're not reading it and you'll see things like, like gaffer or best boy. And you're like, what the fuck is that? Even, uh, they're both, they both have to do with lighting by the way. <laughs> uh, but, um, like he he tells you exactly what all of them are, and he does them in rapid succession. But there's so fucking many titles, yeah. that it takes him eight minutes to get through the list. Well, it takes uh, him it takes him six and a half. The last minute and a half is an ad, but whatever. Well, okay, sure, sure, sure. But it's, it's definitely more than five minutes to to run through the yeah. things. And uh, but yeah, check it out. It, awesome McConnell. Um, and you probably just you probably just search movie credits explained. Here's the uh, thing about this: if you want to know a basic. Uh, introduction to what these people are doing, watch this video. Yeah. If you watch this video and you want to know more about what these people do, go to film IQ and he eventually um, he breaks it down. Like each, like I didn't know what a best boy was. He actually has like a video on best boy and what it does, you know, and it's not about being hot or the the, the (laughs) cutest, butt. it's yeah, no, it's not a puppy dog. Like you would think, like, oh, he's the best boy. Who's the good right. boy? Who's the best boy? Yeah, who's it's, the best boy? It's, actually, the best it's boy. actually a lot of work. So th- this video, <laughs> this video breaks down the basics, and then if you want to go in depth, go to Film IQ. And uh, is it Film IQ? I think it's Film IQ. Film IQ. Uh, filmmaker yeah. IQ. Filmmaker, filmmaker IQ. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I, I tell you what, man, uh, it's pretty amazing. And the last thing that I'll find, I'll, I'll say that I found, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump off the YouTube wagon again. Okay, uh, I'm gonna get political. If you are interested in the state of American politics in any way, shape, or form, for better or worse, I'm going to tell you you need to follow AOC on Twitter. And don't okay. even read the tweets. Don't even bother reading the tweets. But every video she links on that account is enlightening on how our political system actually works. Interesting. So go follow AOC, literally the letters AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Follow her on Twitter and just watch the videos. And if that makes you angry, then at me, bro. Ethan King. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's uh, just some of the the videos this week have just been deep dives into, not even really deep dives, just here's a pharmaceutical company. Here's how your money works. Here's why you owe to the American government. A public and you're basically robbing us blind and it's just amazing so neat uh but speaking of adding on twitter somebody added us on twitter this week with a news article about uh taco bell pop-up that's coming to california uh thank you jury facts for uh yeah. sending this our way give, bringing it to our attention um so we've for the longest time had the the meme of um have you ever been to the uh uh, have you ever Talk been about, to the Taco Bell Catina that serves beer? Yeah, yeah. we did a little, we even did a little video with Jerry Facts on it uh, a couple years ago at, at South by. And yeah, it's kind of like a, this huge thing just from a stupid uh, joke from uh, uh, Night Attack. But um, yeah, and now, I actually I saw a Taco Bell Cantina in New York City in Manhattan. And, did they serve beer? Uh, they did. I didn't. I didn't partake there. Um, uh, there's plenty of other better places in New York to have a beer. Right, but still, life regrets. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it was on the uh, opposite corner, and I couldn't get to it because I was going the other direction. And it was like, uh. whatever. You go to a bean burrito and a fucking beer. You slam that shit down. You chase it with the bean burrito. Then you move on with your day. Yeah. Well, it's funny because it was. I saw it. Uh, it uh, you know, whatever day it was, like you know, 10 a.m. or some shit, and later that day is when I met up with Curtis the rock and I told him about it. Like, Hey, I saw the, the talk about Cantina or whatever. He's like, oh, there's one in Manhattan. <laughs> so that should have been a key to go there. Right. Then you should have just true, fucking yeah. dropped everything, grabbed a cab, take well, us to the talk about Cantina, the search <laughs> beer was, and move on. We were, with on your the, life. 
We were like on the other side of, of uh, Manhattan. I'll, I'm point. hearing like, excuses, but I'm not hearing New York reasons. is big, okay? <laughs> All right, so uh, Taco Bell, uh, Taco Asus? Taco is that what they're calling this thing? No, 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 no. They're calling it The Bell. It's uh, like a hotel pop-up that's happening. <laughs> but Taco Asus? I want to yeah. go there. I, I got to eat some tacos there. Somebody make that happen. Right. So <laughs> this thing's happening, and why why it was interesting to Jury Facts, I'm sure, is because that they serve uh, cocktails at the pool. Poolside. Yeah. Um, okay, other than that, this kind of sounds terrible. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I hate McDonald's. Okay. Fucking hate it. I hate it as a, as a company, as an organization. Um, I really fucking hate McDonald's. You would hate the founder, too, if you watched the movie no, The no. Founder. I, I watched The Founder, and I hate The <laughs> Founder, too. Um, however, Quarter Pounder Deluxe without mayo is my favorite fast food sandwich outside of In-N-Out. Quarter Pounder Deluxe without mayo. It's like... Wait, it's first like, of all, there's a... There's a... It, there's it's, a it's, the it's the the McDonald's version of the Whopper, but I take the mayo off because they just don't need the extra calories. Yeah, and mayo kind of sucks. Um, and also my favorite fast food breakfast is McDonald's uh, uh sausage, eggs, and cheese uh, uh burritos. But I hate uh, McDonald's. You see where I'm yeah. at here? You see where I'm going with this? Like I, I get it. Okay. Yeah. I next get it. next on that list is Taco Bell. Okay. Because there's nothing I won't eat if you take the sour cream off at Taco Bell. Oh, see, no, I I like sour cream. Right, I, I, which which makes me the perfect par- Taco Bell partner for you because I just take I ask for my sour cream on the side and you get double the dosage. But oh, yeah, yeah. Or actually, I would just you know not be charged for adding sour cream by taking yours that you conveniently put on the side. There we go. Um, but yeah, there's there, like there's nothing at Taco Bell that I won't eat as long as there's no sour cream on it, just because I don't like sour cream. Uh. But I hate Taco Bell. Like I, I, I'm, I'm not yeah. a fan of Taco. But my, my problem with this is, um, and I just recently heard somebody throw shade at Wiener Schnitzel. Fuck off. Uh, Wiener <laughs> Schnitzel is amazing. Uh, shitty that's food. Funny to me. Shitty that's service. Funny to me. So that's a hot dog place, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've never been in one. No, I took you to one in Texas. But, okay, that's probably the only time I've been in one. Yes. All right. It's a hot dog place. Yes. And it's called Wiener Schnitzel. Yes. Where. It's a German word, right? Barely. It's actually pronounced Wiener Schnitzel. Yes. Uh, which it's not hot dogs. No. Nor is it even sausage. No. Like it's nothing like that. It's more like a it's like a pork fillet. Like right. A pork steak. I I don't understand. Right. Why is it a hot dog place? And and that's fine. All you need to know is chili cheese dog with chili cheese fries and a four gallon Mountain Dew. That's the only real option that you have there. <laughs> All right. Noted. <laughs> like that's 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 what you get there. That's what everybody gets. Um having Taco Bell at poolside sounds awful enough. <laughs> oh that, that, yeah, that does not sound good. <laughs> having other people eating Taco Bell at poolside that sounds even worse. That's a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, man, I'll seek out one of these cantinas and have a, a beer there. Like I actually, I saw one in Vegas as well when I was well, hanging out with Zilla. This uh, is this is in Palm Springs, right? Isn't that where your girlfriend's from? Uh, nope. Oh, oh, no, no, uh, no, no. yeah. Her brother lives near there. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I knew you had. I knew, I knew she had family there. So this might be somewhere that you visit. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Uh, did they say what the? So they're going to have a, 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 a press release on June twenty first. I think is what they said. So, who knows when this thing is even going to be? Is that just going to be a health advisory not to go in the water? That's that might be it. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm probably not going to partake in this. <laughs> I will partake in the Taco Bell and the drinks, but not the pool. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have a differing opinion, uh, at me over on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche, or if you have a, a, a favorite social media platform that's not Twitter, I'm probably Del Noche or Del Noche 77 on there. What about you, Amos? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at 
Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. And if if you're too fucking lazy to send us an email with all the cool shit you found on the internet and on the YouTubes, send us a, a, just add us on the old Ritual Misery uh, uh, Twitter at Ritual Misery R I T U A L M I S E R Y, and that'll be an alternate form, a probably probably a primary form because y'all fuckers are lazy just like us. Um, I've given given us some ideas for future shows and some other things that you found on YouTube because we are all well. I don't know about Kent, but I'm always looking for cool shit on YouTube. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and you can find our show every Thursday, well, every ish Thursday night ish at 7 p.m. Pacific ish on twitch.tv slash ritual misery and on diamondclub.tv. And I've confirmed it is there, so you can't find the archives, but you can sure as shit watch us live. And of course, uh, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com. Cruise on over to our Discord, and can't you need to put a Discord link up on the ritualmisery.com? I'm calling you out. Oh, and uh, right. make make sure that happens so that people can just go to ritualmisery.com and find all the cool shit we're doing. And this Sunday is the final episode of Game of Thrones, and we will be covering it on Let's Talk About Thrones. And if you have feedback on that, I'm just going to ask everybody. Uh, we're going to do a special episode just for feedback. So let's talk about thrones at gmail.com. Send us all your thoughts on the TV show. Even if you don't listen to our show, uh, let us know what you think about it. And we will go from yep. there. Um, and of course, thank you to Kevin McLeod for letting us use your music for this show and all the things that you do, uh, basically for the, for the, for the entire internet, because you're, you're oh, awesome. Gosh. So thank you so much. Yep. And thank you for listening for me, for Kent, for Kevin McLeod and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Hey, real quick, so uh, I want to bring up that uh, Jenny Josephson bought me these headphones for my uh, my job, and oh, nice. uh, they're they're Sony's, and they're not good for listening to music. But for uh, podcast stuff, I can hear every fucking time your guttural breath is drawn in. It's insane. But oh my god, that's so gross. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jenny. He gets to hear how I breathe. That's great.